Ooh, scientific notation and converting to scientific notation. So this is a fun thing to do. This times 10 to the second, right? 10 to the second is just 10 times 10, which is just 100. So it's just like multiplying your number by 100. And multiplying by 100 just moves over your decimal two places. So you go from, and you can, you know, if you want to start off with 1.60, right? So you have something there. When you move it over two places, you'll end up with 160. So this, when you multiply by 10 to the second, it basically says move this decimal over two places. You might say, why, why would we write it that way? Well, sometimes you have these tables and you want everything to look kind of the same. 2.8, 5.7. But they're, if, all, if they're all different sizes, then it's very hard, right? If that's you, know, if you have a big number there, but a not so big number here, and then a giant number here, right? This is a nice way of standardizing all the numbers so they look like the same in a in a table or in a you know when you're programming a computer. So if there's something deep here. It's just a way of standardizing. That's what scientists like. So the answer for this one's 160. But now that we know that, we don't need we don't need to struggle so much, right? Just 4.00. You could write more zeros if you want. And you say times 10 to the second. So we'll go one, two. Oh, that looks like 400. Right? We don't need to write that. So it's just 400. Or 4 times 100 is 400. Okay, 1.5, move the decimal over 1. What do you get? 15. Eight point three. move the decimal place over by 1. What do you get? 83. 4.9, move the decimal place over by 1. You get, by the that's the 1, right? You get 49. Eight point one, move the decimal place over by 1. We get 81. You know, something you might be interested in is what if you want to move the decimal place to the left? What do you think you have to multiply by? Right? I'll let you think about that. So here we have 1.0. Move the decimal place over by 1. We get 10. It's like one, this is just a fancy way of saying 1 times 10, right? So it's 10. Okay. Move the decimal place over by one, we get 26. Move the decimal place over by one, we get 66. Just for fun, right? This is this would be moving the decimal place to the left, right? So if you're curious, that would be times 10 to the negative 1. But that's not this question, right? It's times 10 to the 1, so it's 66. Okay, how about 3.5 times 10 to the 1 or 10 to the 1st? So 35. Okay, I think we did pretty well with that. Let's see what the next level is. 3.47 times 10 to the first. Okay, so the difference here, it's slightly trickier, I guess, is that you're not gonna end up with a whole number, but that's okay, right? So that's 3.47. You move it over like this, and you get 34.7. That's it. No big deal. 
We don't have to end with a whole number. That's not what standard form means. It just means don't give me that 10 to the whatever thing. All right, so 34.7. All right, try to have some fun with this. And I'll, I'll see you next time. I guess one fun fact is if you wanted to put the number of stars and the size of an atom on the same table, it would be really hard because one would be a gigantic number and one would be a really tiny number, right? But if you use scientific notation, you can put them all, you know, in the same format by just changing the exponent, right? This thing's called the exponent. So you can make the exponent really big or you can make the exponent really negative, and that will give you a really big or a really small number. All right, see you next time.